Hi, it's Cisco with Acrobotic and I'm here to share with you another tip for working with your ESP8266 microcontroller. A very popular application of microcontrollers is collecting sensor data like air quality, soil moisture, temperature, etc. In most of these projects, at least one of the following is true. We want to collect data for a long amount of time, we want to work with large size files such as images, or we want the data to be available even if the device loses power. In another video, I showed you how all of this can be done using flash memory. We also saw how most development boards for the ESP8266 include an SPI flash memory chip that ranges from 512 kilobytes to 16 megabytes of memory. Fortunately, if you want to work with more than 16 megabytes, there is an easy solution. We can connect the ESP8266 to an SD card adapter and write data to it. This allows us to store large amounts of information without worrying about running out of memory, although we should always be careful. In this video, I want to show you how to use a micro SD card to write data to and write data from using the ESP8266. For this video, I'll be using three development boards from the Wemos D1 Mini family. I love working with these boards because of their small form factor and the wide abundance of shields that make my life easier when doing a project because I don't have to do any wiring. I'll be using the standard development board, the Wemos D1 Mini, and a couple of shields. One for a DHT11 sensor that allows me to collect temperature and humidity data, and another one for a micro SD card adapter that'll allow me to write the data to a micro SD card. I'll also use a standard 16 gigabyte micro SD card. I'll leave a link to purchase them from my little Amazon shop in the description of the video. Before this next step, make sure you've seen in other videos how to install the USB drivers for working with either the Wemos D1 Mini or whatever platform you choose for developing for the ESP8266. I'll go ahead and open the IDE and save the new sketch onto my desktop and call it Wemos underscore SD underscore card. The first thing I'll need is a couple of libraries that I'll install using the manage libraries option from the sketch menu. The first one will allow me to write data to and read data from the SD card and that one is called SD file. Go ahead and install it. And the second one will allow me to get data from the DHT11 sensor. And for that, I will search for DHT and install the second link, which is called DHT sensor library for ESPX by BG Tokyo. Go ahead and close it. And in my sketch, I'll include both libraries using include statements with the name of the respective header files. First one is sdfat.h and the second one is dhtesp.h. I'll initialize an object for the sdfat class that I'll name sd and I'll do the same for the DHT ESP class. I'll name this object DHT. In my setup function, I'll initialize the serial object so that it allows me to print debug messages to the serial monitor. I'll use a baud rate of 115200. Then I'll print a debug message using the println method saying that I'm initializing the SD card. Next, I'll be using the begin method of the SD object to start communicating with the SD card adapter. And that method takes one parameter, the pin that's connected to the chip select of the micro SD card adapter. We can find out which pin it is by turning the board upside down and reading the label. We see that it corresponds to the eight. Then we use the setup method of the DHT object to start communicating with the DHT11 sensor. That method takes two parameters. 
the pin that's connected to the data pin of the sensor and we can find out which one it is by turning the board upside down and reading the label. We see that it's D4. Then the second parameter is just the type of sensor that we're using. In our case, it's the DHT11. Next, in our loop function, we'll need first the string where we'll put the data. I'll call that data string and it'll initially be empty. Then we'll need to gather the data from the sensor. I'll just get temperature for this example using the method get temperature of the DHT object. I'll use the default, which will be in Celsius. Then I'll typecast that value to add it to my data string. Then I'll go ahead and create the file where we're going to be storing the data. I'll use the open method of DSD object, which takes two parameters. The first will be the name of the file. I'll call that temperature.txt and the permissions on that file, since we want to add data to it, that'll be file underscore write. If everything goes according to plan, which we can check with an if statement, we can write data to it by using the print ln method of the data file object. We'll need to close the file as well by using the close method. And for debugging purposes, I'll just print it out to the serial monitor. In between measurements, I wanna add a two second delay to give enough time for the sensor to be able to collect the data. I'll go ahead and save it and compile it to see if there are any errors. Before testing out the code, I'll go ahead and prepare the SD card with the correct format and erasing all the contents to make sure that everything works smoothly. I'll plug it into my computer and in Mac OS X, I can use the built-in disk utility in order to format it. I'll click on erase. I'll give it the name data logger and the format I'll select fat. Once that's done, I'll go ahead and eject it. Put it into the SD card shield and stack all the boards together. I'll go ahead and connect it to my computer. Go back to the Arduino IDE and use the tools menu to select the right port as well as the correct board. In my case, Lowland, Wemos, D1, R2, and Mini. Then I'll click on Upload. Once that's done, I can open the serial monitor. And if everything goes well, I should be seeing the temperature being printed out. That means that the file is indeed being created, this if, statement is evaluating to true and the data should be written onto the SD card as well as being printed out onto the serial monitor. We can play around with the sensor and place our finger on top of it to see if we can raise it a few degrees. And there we go. So now we can unplug power and this is where we need to be a little bit careful because if it's in the middle of a data write, the file can become corrupted. But that's beyond the scope of this tutorial, just something to keep in mind. I'll go ahead and extract the SD card, put it in my computer, and go have a look inside. I see that the file was created, and we see that all the values have been stored. See that towards the bottom is when I place my finger and the temperature started rising. So there you have it. We learned today how to use the ESP8266 to store data values from the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor 
onto a file that is being stored in a flash memory card. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That will help me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. I'm also active on social media. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, where you can ask me questions or suggest what should be the next topic on the next video. And you can even use the community tab of the YouTube channel where I've been interacting with some of you. Until next time.